After I finished my jam exams, I was just at home, not much to do. So I enrolled for a six month long diploma in computer programming. And it wasn't born out of any particular desire to be a techie. I was merely looking for a way to pass the time. So I looked for the longest course they had and I enrolled for it. But what that did was that it introduced me to a wonderful world of black screens and green text. This was back in the day, so the computers were very different from how they were now. There was no color screen, just black and green. And then I was introduced to WordPerfect, um, Lotus 1, 2, 3, DBase 4. I'm sure most of you have never heard of these applications. A lot of them required um, memorizing shortcuts. So you had to remember, okay, Control and F2 does this, Control and F8 does that. But I was sitting, I totally loved it. I really enjoyed it. And after I finished the, um, the course, I just started writing programs. Um, I would wake up in the morning, start developing, and it was very interesting, I loved it. Then shortly after that, I went to university, I left for university, and I was studying economics. While I was in university, I got a laptop and a printer, and I decided to start a business typing essays and assignments for other students. Now, some of my friends heard about this, and they thought, is, is, do you expect a student to pay you to do something that they could do themselves? But I was like, sure, why not? And yeah, it was true, because students were more than willing to pay somebody to do something that they didn't want to do themselves. And back then, a lot of students were not interested in typing. So business was booming. It was really good. And um, I got very busy. After a while, I had to stop my business because it actually didn't give me time to do my own assignments. But what it did was that it got me thinking about how women could use information technology for their financial empowerment. And I say women because I've, I've, I'm a woman, first of all, and I've always had a very deep passion for women living more empowered lives. So after I graduated, I decided to do a master's degree in information systems. And then that now informed my subsequent career path. I spent many years working in the technology, gender, and research space. So by the time I had decided to set up the Women's Technology Empowerment Center, WTEC, I had volunteered at a woman's shelter where I was working in the computer lab with women who had left um, abusive relationships and marriages, many of them with young children, and I saw how having basic computer literacy skills enabled them to get jobs that were previously out of their reach. I had also taught classes to unemployed youths and adults at a local community technology center. And from time to time, I would run into some of my old students, and they would tell me about the job they got based on the courses they had taken at the center. So when I, I, I was back in um, Lagos, I set up a technology mentoring program for teenage girls, where I was teaching them how to blog. And over the course of the program, I saw how their confidence, how um, their comfort using computers, using the internet, and um, just their general, and their writing skills as well. But they, they developed a, a sense of confidence, like, wow, I can do this. So it's not that difficult. So in 2008, I set up WTEC, and what we set out to do was to engage Nigerian women and girls with, um, in information technology. Uh, we equip them with technology skills. Um, for, we work with girls specifically through um, a girls camp that we run every year. And we try to introduce young girls at an early age to computers, to the internet, and other information technology. We also work with uh, young women. We run an entrepreneurship and technology uh, program where we teach women how they can integrate uh, technology into their businesses. We've also worked with NGOs trying to demonstrate how they can use technology to amplify their voices and for their advocacy, leadership, community development, and education activities. So, so far, um, WTEC has reached out to about 5,000 women and girls through our programs and collaboration with others. Now, the research shows that up to the age of about 11 or 12, boys and girls are equally as interested in science and tech. 
But due to a combination of different factors, from about the age of 12, girls' interest and participation in science and technology declines. So we decided to set up um, a pilot of a technology camp. This was back in 2008 where we could bring in girls at the point where the data was showing that they were losing interest in science and technology. And we would introduce them to computers, we would have uh, technology classes, we would have career talks, we would have excursions to tech, uh, technology companies, and all at a bid to inspiring them and getting them engaged in technology for life. So we've received feedback since we started, and we've plugged that into refining the camp. So for instance, we've increased the duration of the camp from one week to two weeks, and also increased the number of the girls who attend each camp. And then based on the feedback we get, we're constantly revising our curriculum. Now, as an organization that is devoted to influencing positive change in women's lives, one thing that we've realized that it's not always easy to know if you're having an impact. And that's not just for us, that's for any organization that is trying to do something new, that is trying to create changes in society. Now, for us at WTEP, we figure that this is a good time to try and find out, really, are we doing a good job? Because this is our fifth year of existence, and five years is quite a landmark point for a lot of organizations. The United States uh, Small Business Administration shows that over 50% of small businesses fail within the first five years of, their, of starting their operations. And as an NGO, I mean, people think, oh, an NGO is a charity. But really, non-governmental organizations have the same goal as business enterprises. That's that you don't want to make any losses, and you want to generate enough revenue that you can plug back into your organization to help it grow over the longer term. So I was thinking, so imagine if in the US where conditions for doing business are much better than here in Nigeria. If WTEC has been around for five years, maybe that's a good thing, but yeah, maybe, maybe not. Now, one thing that I urge all organizations or people who are trying to um, bring about social innovation to do is to make sure that they develop a matrix or evaluation tools so that Think about this before you start your work so that you can use it to measure your work along the way. So you can always ask yourself, are we doing a good job? Um, what are the weaknesses in our system? So we at WTEC have developed that. But then one thing we realized very early on was that our evaluation um, tools helped us to track what was happening while the program was going on. But then what happens afterwards? What happens after the camp is over? After our workshops are over and our alumni you know, graduate and they go, then what happens? We realize that our tools were not good enough. Uh, they were not giving us accurate information about what happens afterwards. So we developed another tool, which is an interview that we administer six months after the program has started. So we call up our alumni and find out, so the things that you learned you know, during your time with WTEC, are you using them? If so, how? And if they're not, why? And that was very good because it let us know that a lot of the um, women and girls were not using the tools. Well, I would say maybe like about half of them. And the problem was that they didn't have access. They didn't have access to the computers. They didn't have access to the internet. I mean, this was in 2008, 2009, the early years. So we realized that this was a major problem in our strategy. If we wanted to be successful in our mission, we had to find a way that we could provide access for our alumni and support them over the long term so that they could build up on their technology skills and really become engaged. So that helped us to um, come up with the decision to set up our own technology um, training center. Before that, we would use computer labs in different organizations, different schools, because we didn't have the budgets to um, set up our own. So we set it up with the intention that our alumni, after they graduate, could come back and use the space for free. And at the same time, we offered business services to members of our local community, but they would pay for it. And in paying for it, they would subsidize our alumni being able to use it for free. So that's another thing I realized as well. Along the way, as you go on with, um, with your projects, I mean, I know that you know students are very, well, at least I know always, they were very passionate about different things. And sometimes you're like, I want to do this. I want to, I want to tackle this issue in government 
or I'm not happy about something in my community, it's always good to try and take stock along the way. So, so far, so good. Um, from time to time, we meet some of our, our alumni, some of the girls who attended the camp, for instance, and they tell us that, wow, that's because of the camp and maybe the career talks and all the classes we had, I've decided to pursue a career in science and technology. And I mean, when we hear that, I mean, it makes us very happy. Sometimes we meet some, some of our, our girls who tell us, well, I decided that I, I'm not interested in pursuing a career in science and technology, but I really enjoy the classes that we took, so I would like to keep learning and keep using technology. And that's fine, that's great. Sometimes we meet our alumni who are not interested in doing anything technology related, and they're not interested in building up on their skills. And well, sometimes that happens when you're trying to bring about change. And another point is that our, our world today is very different from how it was years ago. One of the earlier um, TED talks that we were listening to said this, technology has really changed a lot. It's changed how we live, it's changed how we do business. And so it's very difficult for us to separate our technology lives from our non-technology lives. So even for those girls and women who attended our programs and are still not particularly interested in technology, what my hope is, or our hope is that their, their time and their experiences at WTEC will have better equipped them to navigate in this technology-driven world. Now, another point I wanted to make about when you're trying to create social change is that um, a lot of times people will ask you for your impacts. How do you know you're doing a good job? What are your numbers? Yes, this, 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 this. Um, how many people have you impacted? And all that. Fair enough questions. Our evaluations are filled with questions that ask for specific data that can be counted. But not all our success stories can be counted or in big numbers. Sometimes the success is in maybe one person that you are able to... Um, for instance, we had, we've had some girls who were able to um, set up blogs for their mothers who had businesses. We had another girl who, um, after her time at the camp, we started video recording the youth services in her church. Um, and then we do have the girls who decide that they're going to pursue technology careers. You know, that's great. But then change does not always happen in a big way. Sometimes it's in very tiny ways. If you get funding from donors, like we get some funding from donors, and they will ask for big numbers, big numbers, you know, I think it's important that we try to find all the ways, aside from numbers, that we can use to describe our work. I came across a quote recently by um, the German physicist Albert Einstein, and he said that not everything that counts can be counted, and not everything that can be counted counts which means that it's not everything that is of importance that you can, actually, you can actually grab hold of, enumerate, put in figures. Sometimes you're going to have to build a bigger picture. So what we do at WTEC is we're always working to refine the way we evaluate our programs, but we look for alternative ways. So while we'll have a report, we'll detail numbers. At the same time, we use other tools like we use pictures, photographs from our programs, we use videos, we use blog posts, we use feedback from our, our alumni, we use testimonials, and we use that to try to build a picture of our alumni's post-WTEC world. So basically, after they've graduated from our programs, what's, what is their life like? How has their life changed? How is their life better as a result of attending a program? And I, I really, I think it's very important that all organizations all social sector organizations do this. I'm attending a course right now on social sector management, and one thing that I've gotten is that if you ever have to choose between quality and quantity in your program, go for quality every time. There is no substitute for doing good work, even if you feel that you're not reaching out to as many people as you would like to. It's much better to focus on on having rigor and depth in your program as opposed, as, as opposed to trying to reach as many people as possible, but affecting them in a very superficial way. So I would just like to, um, I would like to say that I think that if you're working in the social space, try to find ways that you can describe your work. 
And it's, um, it's very good, I think. It also changes your relationship with your funders. Number one, if you're able to describe your, your work and the progress you're seeing in your work, not just in terms of numbers, but using other things like photographs and videos and uh, maybe like a short uh, documentary, testimonials, it builds a richer picture of the change that you're seeing within maybe your community that you're working in and how the problem you're addressing is changing. It also lets other people know what the complexities are in your work, and it helps them appreciate the hard work that you're doing better. And then your funders, or whoever is supporting you, or whoever is looking at you, observing the work you're doing, they start to see you as a true expert in the community that you're working in. So you, they, they recognize that you have a true understanding of the problem that you're trying to solve. For me, what I'm passionate about is I'm passionate about girls and women living empowered lives, uh, fulfilled lives, and technology is one tool that I use to do this. For you, your passion could be something else, and you could be using a different tool. So thank you so much for listening, and I urge you all to go out and make some change. <laughs>